What's up everybody, in this video I'll be showing you how I use PropStream to come up with my wholesale offer to the seller and also I'll be showing you another way that I run comps other than the 70% rule that can help you make offers as well. Let's get into my computer. Alright, so now that we are in my computer, let's say we're going to use this property right here as a deal that we're going to run comps on. Now, you see I do have the property address block out just, you know, just for privacy reasons. But the first thing I like to do when I come in is I don't really mess with anything up front, but I look at the comps that they do have. So right now you have, you know, our potential properties, a two bedroom, one bath, 1,000 square feet, right? So that's what we have. It was built in 1964 and that's the most important thing. So the next thing that we would need to do is look and see what else we have in the area. Because normally if I do mess with any of the filters, I'm gonna change this to two to three bedrooms. And I'm change this to one to two bedrooms based off of the bedrooms that the subject property has. So our property is a two one. So basically, I would make it from two to three, one to two. So all you see is three bedrooms, two baths, and one and one and a half bath to two baths. So we we find right there. So what I'm gonna do first when I come into prop stream, which you know this is what I use whenever I run comps and I'm on the phone with the seller. Let's say that the seller says that the property doesn't have any issues with the HVAC. It just was replaced. It has a new roof on the property. Uh, mostly everything is cosmetic. So in that instance, that means it just needs to be updated, updated appliances, new fixtures. Just needs to be cosmetically updated. So with that being said, in this area, it probably costs you around $30,000 to completely update a property that doesn't have any major issues, just need that type of renovation. So uh, what we would do is first, I'm going to come in and change this to 0.25. So it's going to be a quarter mile distance. And let's see what we have in a quarter mile radius, for, radius of the property. So now you see we made the adjustments from lowest price to highest we see we got a property that sold for 210 built in 1961 that's 0.1 miles away from the property so what i'm going to do i'm going to copy it because obviously there's no picture but first i'm going to go into details then i'm going to see okay the person that bought this was a retail buyer because they occupy and they're currently occupying the property so nine times out of ten they pay they will pay more than what an investor would pay so they paid two hundred and ten thousand but let's just see what 210000 on the retail market. Let's just see what 210000 on the retail market will get you. I'm pretty sure it's pictures. And it is. So now we're just going to take a look at it. It's not in bad condition at all. It's not updated completely. It's not updated. But it has some good flooring in there. It has stainless steel. Um... It's, it's livable condition, as you can see. All right, so we see that's what 210,000 gets you. So obviously that's not the top of the market. So we need to find a comp that's going to be a comp that will be in the top of the market because we're going to use the 70% rule. So we find another property that's on the same street as our property. And it's a three bedroom, one and a half bath. So it has one bed more and a half bath more. And it's a little bit bigger because ours is a thousand square feet. So let's see what this actually gets you. Okay, it's not updated, but it's still livable. You can put a tenant in here. So now that I looked at, now that I'm looking at this, this property sold at 190, right? So with a thousand square feet, ours would sell less than that if it was in that condition. So 175 is the next comp that sold. Just let me make sure so we can see what type of buyer it was. And this also was a retail buyer so now we're gonna see what sold for 175 so this property sold for 175 and it's another retail buyer let's see what we got and you need to be doing this while you're on the phone so of course you got to take it's gonna take time to get used to doing this on the phone while you collect the information with the seller um but this p property doesn't have any pictures let's go see if they have pictures on 
other softwares. Any other, any other, other. Let's see if they have pictures on any of the other websites. And they don't. So we really can't use that. We see from the outside that it needs work. So now what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to expand it out because I'm not seeing the comps that I would need. I see, you know, what a property that's sold on the market for 210 will go for. But I'm going to go to half a mile now. So now that we out half a mile, I'm just going to make another adjustment, change that to single family just to make sure. Um, now I'm going to, it's already rearranged. You can see where rents are going for in the area. That's very important. Because if you're going to hold it as a rental, you'll see what the square footage and um, the beds and bath will go for. So you can use that as what the rents are to figure out what the rents are in the area. Now, the first thing I want you to see that's very important is these properties down here that you see that sold for $2.4 million. They're not actually selling for that amount. But that's somebody that has a large loan amount, and which is 9 times out of 10 a hedge fund buyer. And you need to figure out who those hedge fund buyers are. So basically, I guarantee this person has a lot of properties, right? So it's, they have a lot of properties that they have all across the country, most likely, and which they do. They have 922 properties. So these are the people that you want to be selling your deals to. These are the buyers that you want to sell your deals to because they're going to pay more than somebody that is actually using the 70% rule. So you need to go after these type of buyers. And guess what? Most of the time you can sell mostly all your deals to these buyers because they're willing to buy whatever you send to them as long as it's a deal still for them. So just throwing that out there. So don't let these prices confuse you. So now the next comp that I'm going to look at, I see we have a higher one here that sold for 234000 So I'm going to go into the details tab. Okay, and I see it's a retail buyer. Now... This is a completely renovated property. Let's one thing we didn't check. Let's see how far it is away from our property. So where is it? It's 0.4 miles away, so a little bit less than a half a mile. This is completely renovated. This is what properties are going for in the area. Um, it's completely renovated, as you can see. So we know in the similar square footage, similar beds and bath that a property in this particular area that's two years older, that's a little bit bigger, one bedroom more, half a bath more, will sell for $234,000. Now, don't just stop there. We have a cash comp here. That's what the green stand for. It stands for cash comp. This cash comp sold for $231,500. It's a three bedroom, one and a half bath, and it's a thousand square feet. So it's identical to ours, a thousand square feet. It just has Half bath more, one bed more, similar lot size, four years newer, and it's 0.4 miles away as well too. And that sold for 231, so that gives me an idea that this property that we have in tip top condition could sell anywhere from 220 to 235 around that range. You're not always gonna be spot on with your comps. The best thing to do is make sure that you get it under contract at a, you know, at a good price. So you won't have any issues with selling it, but don't get caught up on running comps because you will never be spot on. But that's why an open house is very important too when it comes down to selling the deal. So if you undercutting yourself, if you have multiple buyers there that want the property, they're going to bid up to the right sale price for you. That's why an open house is definitely a gem. So we have this property here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the 70% rule based off of this particular property. So Basing it off of that property, let's say that the ARV would be 231500 So you just multiply that by 70% because we're using the 70% rule here. That will give you a price of $162,050. Then remember I said that, you know, we have repairs that also needs to be done. So $30,000 in cosmetic repair. So we will subtract the $30,000 from the $162,050. And now that will create a amount of $132,050, which will be what you would sell a deal for. And now to in order for us to make money, we got to subtract what we want our assignment fee to be. So our assignment fee in this case would be $15,000. But even if we can make $5,000 or $10,000, that's fine too. But we're going to start at $15,000. So our max allowable offer to the seller would be $117,050. Then 
we're not going to start at our max allowable offer. We're going to subtract another 10% from our max allowable, and that will make an offer amount of $105,345, and that will be our starting offer on this property. But since that's our starting offer, and we want to make $15,000, we know, like I said before, our max allowable is where our stopping point is. Now, if you're willing to cut into the fifteen thousand and make ten thousand or five thousand or twenty five hundred, you can do that. And you would just adjust what your max allowable would be. But you just want to start there to give yourself some room to negotiate. So the next way to run comps is the as is method. The seventy percent rule is mainly used for someone that is going to flip the property and put the property on the market. But you may have landlords that may be willing to pay more than, than what the 70% rule will actually offer. So I just like to check to see what properties that's in similar conditions as the property that I'm getting ready to put on the contract is selling for. Because if I can offer even more, then I'm definitely I'm going to do that. Because we're not in the business to try to rip anyone off. But it's best to spend the time to see if you can help to sell out even more. So now we're back into my computer again. Um, we're going to keep everything the same. And what I'm going to do whenever I'm using the as is method, I see we have this comp here that sold for $70,000. And like I said, sellers are in the business to, they're going to they, they're gonna negotiate as well too. So never start at your max allowable offer. So I will actually use this comp, even if this comp doesn't look like the property that we're going after, I would actually use this comp as a comp that is going to help set my starting offer with the seller. Because then if I'm offering more than what this property is actually going for, you have a better chance of getting a price out of the seller if the seller doesn't want to give you a price. And it definitely will help give you more negotiating room. But let's take a look at it. And they don't have any pictures. Um, this property, you can tell it needs a lot of work and it sold for $70,000, right? So we know that the property was sell for more than that because the property only has cosmetic issues that we have. But we're going to look at this comp here. It's a three bedroom, one bath, and it's 1,000 square feet. And it's 0.4 miles away from our property. So it sold for 115000 This is what an as-is situation comes in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a look at this property. I'm going to see what it looks like, all right? And I see that... Uh, investor bought it so this is a investment property for someone it doesn't have any pictures that I can see let's see if this has pictures yes it does it has pictures so now you can see that this property is boarded up but it looks like it can be what the condition of our potential property will be it definitely um doesn't it doesn't like it have like major issues it just needs to be updated completely all right it just like it needs to be updated so we can say all right this property sold for a hundred and fifteen thousand dollars so anything less than that will be profit to us because this property is in similar condition to ours and this is a as is come so if you're on the phone, you got to be quick whenever you're talking to the seller with coming up with offers. So if I want to make fifteen thousand, my starting offer to the seller will be a hundred thousand, and I'm not going to start at a hundred thousand. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take another ten percent from that, which would be another ten thousand. So my starting offer to the seller will be ninety thousand dollars on this particular property. But I know that my MAO will be a hundred thousand. But if I want to adjust my assignment fee to 10000 then I know I'll be able to offer the seller a little bit more. But that's pretty much how I run comps. You may have people run comps other ways. But like I said before, when it comes down to this, if you do an open house, if you're not sure if you undercutting yourself on a deal, when you have an open house and you have multiple buyers show up, they're going to start outbidding each other. So it's going to get to a point where they're going to say, okay, I can't offer no more. The next buyer will say, hey, I can't offer no more. And that's what the property actually is going to sell for if you got multiple buyers out there. That's why it's not good to always just say, hey, this is what I want for and I'm selling this amount. Always be open to accept the highest and best offer. Now, if you do have hedge funds, hedge funds are going to be willing to pay more anyway. So that's why I said early in the video, it's very important to pay attention to those comps that are selling for $2.2 million 
because they have a lot of money that they're trying to disperse out into the market. Now, feel free to check out my wholesale playlist here, and I'll see you next time.